Hey everybody, it's Nick from Ingram Audio, and I'm going to be showing you how I use Drum Daddy with live drum tracks. One of my favorite things about using MIDI to replace uh, shells um, opposed to trigger plugins is when you use, when you have MIDI uh, and you use Drum Daddy, if you have like a small room or if somebody sent you a drum stems the mix and you know and like the drum room doesn't sound great or there's just no room mics or anything you can use the room samples and the overhead samples in Drum Daddy to add the ambience that you're missing from those live drums if you don't have that. I personally don't really like um, triggering plugins because they always just seem to mistrigger and you know mess something up when you're doing your final bounce and you've already bounced the song 400 times and you don't want to listen to it one last time you know and then you send it off and then there's people telling you that there's something wrong in there or there's a drum missing but yeah let's start diving in here so i have a song right here with some uh with some drums it's just a kick snare rack floor overheads hi-hat there's no room mics they're recorded in a pretty tiny room i'll show you a little bit of this But yeah, they sound very raw, they sound very uh, real, but not great. We wanna make those sound better. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna highlight my kick track, and then I'm gonna go up here to track, and then I'm gonna click on replace or double drum track. And then it's gonna load slowly because my computer is garbage. There it is, okay. Then we're gonna to wanna to select kick. Um, I don't think it really matters what you select here. Uh, it just kind of puts the MIDI note in a spot. So not a big deal. The only thing I'm really gonna be touching after that is this uh, threshold knob, or slider, I should say. Um, and I'm just gonna uh, play with it until it looks like it picked up all the kicks. Um, I don't wanna do too little, because it won't pick up enough. I don't wanna do too much, because then it'll pick up the things that aren't supposed to be kick drums. It looks like probably around here. That's probably fine. I'm just gonna do a little scroll, make sure everything's there. And it looks like we are good with the kick. Then all you do is you hit okay. And then I'm gonna slide it up to my track I made that's gonna have Drum Daddy in it. You can then delete this, that's nonsense. Now I'm going to I'm just going to highlight all of those kick notes I just made, and then I'm going to make them all the same velocity because I'd rather start at the highest velocity and then go in manually and um, change the velocities on some of the fills and on some of the hits just to make it a little more humanized. The uh, velocities that it detects on here, uh, I just don't really like uh, you know, how it works. I don't feel like it, uh, it uh, accurately picks up uh, the velocities very well. So we're just going to make that all 127. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the snare track. I'm going to switch this to snare because I have OCD. Um, let's check this out, make sure I got all these snares. There is a lot of ghost notes in here. Um, I've noticed with this method, it does have trouble picking up ghost notes a lot of times. So um, you'll just have to punch them in by hand probably, some of the ghost notes. Um, before you do that, I would highly recommend quantizing the drums as close to the grid as possible. That way you don't have any weird phase issues or anything. You know, if you're going to go and punch them in by hand. Um, it looks like it's picking up everything, though, which is pretty cool. Oh, there's some ghost notes missing here. Oh, baby. I think we just got it. It helps when the drummer hits nice and hard and clean. It looks like everything, cool, okay. Now I'm gonna pull that back up to the Drum Daddy track, then I'm gonna highlight that track. I'm gonna join those together so they're all in one. Cool, I'm just gonna make those all the same velocity. And then now we are on the rack tom.
And it looks like we're good with this one. There's not too many Tom hits, so that's pretty easy. Join that together, and then I'll do, let's make sure that's in the right spot here. There we go, okay, floor Tom, the last one. Any day now. There it goes. A couple more Tom hits on here for the floor. But it looks like we already got everything. Cool. Easy. And then we're going to put that up to the Drum Daddy track and then merge that with the rest. Now I need to pull that down to where the floor Tom is on my Drum Daddy right there. Okay, so now we have pretty much all the hits uh, in there as MIDI. Um, it probably missed a couple uh, flam hits on the snares. I think there's a couple flames on the floor tom. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of visually look at the drums and listen here and there. Make sure all the velocities look right and um, make sure all the flams are in there. Um, this is all pretty, uh, this is a pretty big part in the song, so a lot of this won't really be velocitized until the fills and the verses. I guess the snare needs to be a little fixed there. Looks like there's a flam tom. Okay, so for this, what we're going to do, zoom in super far, find the beginning of that floor tom. Where am I? <laughs> Here we go. It looks like that's about where it's hitting. Maybe. It's hard to tell, kind, kind of. I believe it's about right there. And then we're going to zoom in down here in the MIDI, and then I'm just going to copy it exactly on that line. So it should be right. There we go. Then give this a little, little velocity action there. There's a flam snare. I'm gonna do the same thing with a the snare. Cool, and then now I'm just gonna keep going and velocitizing. Is that even a word? <laughs> velocitizing. I'm gonna change the velocity on these hits as I just look at it. Um. And like I said, I really only got to change the verses because the choruses are pretty big and we want those to hit kind of hard, every hit to be big. Um, looks like, I'm, oh, here we go, some fills. A little snare fill, a little snare diddly. be a little thing in there a little guy beautiful cool let's keep rolling here a little bit lower on that one. Oh, here's a bunch of ghost notes okay so to make this a lot faster I'm just going to highlight the ones that are supposed to be ghost notes all together I believe it's that one yep is that supposed to be? I don't know if that one's supposed to be ghosty. That one looks a little quiet. Um, I'm gonna leave that out for now. Highlight all these. Okay. And then I'm going to change these all together and then just kind of go back in and do a couple by hand. There we go. Give 
give some of these kicks a little bit of a velocity change just so they sound like they're kind of going like boom boom getting a little bit louder there let's give it a little more of that human touch Looks like we got all that part. Should be most of it. This song's not too long. Um, okay, so we got two more fills. It doesn't take too long to do this, really. In my opinion, it's way better to do this than use some sort of trigger plug-in because those, it would just be a hassle to try to get these, uh, these fills. You know, like I would always have to put the fills in a separate track and all this nonsense with a different threshold. And it just wasn't worth it and it would still miss trigger half the time. Cool. So that should be all of the uh, the transients should be on there now. All of the uh, ghost notes should be on there. The velocity should all be correct. And this should sound a lot better. Already sounds so much better than those live drums did. Let's compare it to how the drums sounded before real quick. <laughs> those sound honestly a little broken to me compared to what we have now. Um... <laughs> Now, I'm pretty much just going to tweak it a little bit more. Um, I, I want to listen to uh, this. Mostly, I want to listen to the snare and the overhead. Make sure we're not sounding too different so it doesn't get weird or, you know, just don't get any like weird overtones or anything. Sounds like that snare is a little lower than the stock Drum Daddy snare that I got going. So I'm just going to maybe tune it down a little bit. You know what, let's give it some girth and attack on that bad boy. Love adding that girth and attack. Cool, that's sounding so much better. Um, let me hear these toms in this overhead real quick. Okay, those are kind of low. They're also panned opposite to what I have my drum daddy set to now. Um, so I'm gonna switch these. I'm gonna jump over to the floor tom, switch that over, and then the rack tom's gonna go a little bit this way. And then I'm also gonna change the pan on the overheads in the room on the toms because we are all, you know, we are using those overhead and rooms in drum daddy to add that ambience that we're missing from the live drum overheads and the fact that the live drums don't have a room mic because it was a very tiny room. Um, this tom's gonna go this way just a little bit and this one's gonna go all to the left. Same with the room. There we go. Much better. Let's just tune down some of these toms a little bit, make them a little girthier. Because I think the toms and the overheads were lower. And then we got to tune down the overheads and room with it. That 
floor time's getting a little ringy. Let's add some girth and attack to that floor tom. It's sounding great. We sound so much better than we did just like four minutes ago. It's so easy to do this. It's so quick and it adds so much to it. Um, just for the hell of it, I think I'm just going to play around with a... Uh, some other drums see if i can make the sound even cooler than it already does uh let's turn the instruments back on with it I jump to a big part in the song you know now you can, you can tell we now have that 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 room sound we're missing before and it's just that's what i love hearing in drums i was just missing that with those live drums and now it's there and i'm happy and it sounds great Let's see, let's pick another snare. Let's make this fat. Kinda like that. That sounds so much better. Hear this uh, verse. Let's go see as we did. I think I like the fat snare better on the song. And it's that simple. There we have it. You know, it took me no time to really do it. And the best part about it is it's not going to miss trigger. You know, it's not going to have any mess ups in there randomly when you bounce it. Um, and you can change the sample so easily with it. You can add in the room and the overheads to give it a little bit more ambience if you want to. It's just you have so much more freedom this way, in my opinion. And this is always how I mix my live drums. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm usually always blending some sort of MIDI with uh, the shells or just replacing the shells completely and only keeping the overheads and room mics or something. But yeah, I hope uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions uh, or hit me up, send me a message on social media. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys.